Tales from the Bungler, the Little Fella. Don't know exactly how to begin the story. Sure, I'm supposed to be a newspaper man. Me, Johnny Ransom. But I've never covered an item like this one. I'm afraid you won't believe me. But this is the way it happened across my heart. You see, I had a townhouse in the country. A pair of twins, age four. This novel I wanted to write. It's a normal purple morning at our place. Twins were at breakfast, batting it back and forth between them. Sip my coffee, which tasted like cast oil. I watched my thoughts far from page three of the novel, which as much as I've written. The house was a mess, dishes were stacked high in the sink. The front yard was a jungle, unfit for the kids to play in. And too much, I was a beaten man. A buzz of the front door suddenly sounded. Looking back to Soy India was a fine figure of a woman, tall and strong and lovely. Came from the Indies. I had heard before she could ask me for a job. To tell the truth, she didn't expect me to ask for a little job. She knew I needed her, and she, and she was there. I asked her how she knew. She gave me a curious answer, little fella, told me. He takes care of me, and now he's taking care of you too. I only half heard her at the time. I was to hear her answer again many times later. First, there was a lunchtime. Put a good meal in work to the book. And coming out of the house to find a table set for lunch. On the front lawn, twins are just finishing theirs. Almost weekly, house is spotless, the yard is clean. Rubbish is over by giant hand. And he said, told you, it's a little fella. He's helping me. And he's got a big one with his name in his time, Big Bull. It's always helping folks they, 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 they like, like me and you. It's weird, no, it's funny. I had to be, I laughed, it sounded like my voice was changing. I waved weakly towards the door of the barn. Trying to be funny, never been able to bunch those doors, see what was inside. It was fast, maybe your, I mean, old friends could open these barn doors while they are at it. Because I'd like to see what's inside. A moment in which nothing happened, but only a moment. And slowly the heavy doors began to swing open. They creaked, they groaned, but they moved. They moved and they called. With nothing, no one, we have fifty yards of those doors. That is no one who ever could see. See, he's a little fellow again, in the his voice. But he heard, he had a big ball come to help him. I got up and stumbled towards the barn, the strange and tug. I couldn't move to those doors. I never worried, I went back to the house. He never bought my coffee, it was strong and I needed it. I didn't speak, I didn't believe it. I kept telling myself. Then before Bobby tumbled into the system, bed colour place next door. The next often Ellen came running to get me, shouting for the help for those tears. The kids were in plain, couldn't see the grown a new system, and I was very round, afraid Dobby was alive when I got to the well. Indy was already there on the ground near system. Bobby spent a dive but alive, smiling, caught him in my arms, heard a little faint well there. The little fella, I looked at Lindy, her vibes framed the words that when she went on quickly, he had found Bobby as I did, bruised and hurt by the side of the well. All that would have been passed fresh from his lungs. The voice dropped, someone climbed down the narrow system. Of the boy, uh, of someone lifted him up and out by the mouth of the well. Room for a child's body, yes. A man's no. The edge of the pipe was torn away by a giant hand. I checked the words, the vain fault remained. The little fella, big bull, I checked the fault, I fast. When I got to my feet, Ed Collins was with us. Big guy, big and mean. The cocky's arm, he cried a short off up front. He asked them questions. He died he went off his pro- he get off his property fast. No, he'd be blasted if he kept the top of the system. I could bloody well keep my brats chained up. And if he couldn't start to get get in a hurry, he was gonna blast us. But that that was when I hit him. I first punch smashed the shotgun down against his back ribs. I took him to the jaw, rolling him over the scrub near the system. He cursed for me, terrible revenge against the what I love most. My children, we didn't get up. Not until we, after we'd gone. We couldn't be bothered calling for the next day, days. I don't think bothered me though. Two things. The little fellow and big ball. Couldn't get them out of my mind. Could you? And my boots. I finished the first chapter by 
I took it down to the town. I should liked it. Coming back to the house at night, I could see the next chapter just the way I wanted it. House was dark. My house key was in my hand. I didn't need it. The door was ajar. The natural silence pounded my ears. In the hallway, I stumbled at my feet. There was there was something soft, moaning low, and flickered the right switch at my feet. It was injured, lying still, hurt. She stirred, moaned, moaned again, whispered, Collins, he came for the children. But it's safe, he drove off. Go ask him, he'll be all right. Yes, I heard her, she said, Marie. I ran out of the house and across the lawn. I found myself following a trail of bloodstains. Put in place, at the end of the trail, I found Collins. He then he downed down in a clump of bushes, dead. But I saw his face been bashed flat by a boulder, maybe, or a giant fist. Then I saw a knife embedded in his neck. It was the smallest I'd ever seen. A side of in my index finger, a toy knife, or a toy man, a head crushed by a giant fist. I could hear an Indian voice, the little fellow. He takes care of me, him and Big Ball. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. You don't believe me. What do you?